Let us pray. Almighty God, let us humble our hearts as we come before you. We ask that you remind us that we've come here for one purpose and one purpose only. That is to serve you. And that in serving you, we should learn to serve those whom we represent and those who are your servants. As we approach you this morning, Lord, we ask that you guide our thoughts, our actions, and we ask that all that we do be done to your honor and your glory. We ask that those who are absent on, on their way, we ask that you guide their footsteps, protect them, Lord, and we ask your blessings on all of us here this morning. In your holy and precious name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Member Campbell. Uh, let me welcome each and every one and thanks the, thank the, the members for reposing confidence in me to just hold a seat for the chairman until he gets here. But let, before we go any further, let me welcome uh, the students and teachers from the Catherine Hall Primary School. 89 students from Catherine Hall Primary School and seven teachers from Catherine Hall Primary School. Welcome to the sitting of the PAAC and I hope that you find it useful. Welcome member, um, students and teachers. All right, um, are there any apologies for absence? Uh, Marissa Dalrymple Filbert, any other? None? All right. Uh, can we go to the confirmation of the minutes? I mean, it has been circulated. Minutes have been circulated. Can we take the minutes as being read? Bye. Member Stewart. Seconded. Yeah. All right. Uh, are there any amendments from the minutes? No amendments? Matters arising from the minutes? There are no matters arising. Can we move to item seven, which is new business. Can we ask the orderlies to bring in the Minister of Education, please? While the ministry enters, um, members, I just a, a suggestion. Seeing that we we are moving along on the um, inviting various ministries and agencies, seeing that most of us, as members of parliament, have gotten a request from some of the agencies, such as RADA and the national works agencies on farm roads and, and other road projects uh, would see it fit that we ask them for a report on the roads that are going to be done. Um, also, the same from the national works agency. Um, is that members? Yeah? Something that we should get a report so that at next sitting we can at least start perusing those reports to, for bringing probably the agencies to, if there are any questions that can, that needs to be asked. Huh? Um, I would suggest, Chair, um, if you're going to make the request, it might be useful to at least try to schedule it so uh, the requests go, they can be prepared for when we want them here with the report. Okay. We'll, we'll the communicate with the, the substantive chairman so that he can put that in, in action. I think for the moment you are the substantive chairman.
Can I? Can you use the mic, please? Uh, that is is that in keeping with the the schedule which was already? Yes, it would be. That no, we are, I don't think we're we're meeting. We, next week. we no, we're not meeting next week. So we would have given them at least two weeks to prepare those reports. What I'm asking is if are those agencies scheduled to appear on the next date? Um, well, um, Chair, my suggestion is really in communicating with the agency about the report, yes. which is one thing, yes. if we could also determine where on the schedule right. that they would be able to... That they will, right. So, so what we are requesting right now, the reports and then the clerk will then, mm -hmm. when it being well. scheduled, will, will ask them to appear. Of that, Chairman, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what I just need to, when we are making the enquiries, um, is this consistent with our mandate? Yes, it is. That, that, that we are seeking to establish expenditure. Wh what the, those agencies, the, what the expenditure is and where they are along. Yeah. The so these are major projects that's going to be because I think they. they uh, if I understand it clearly, um, Chairman, um, the, these agencies would have been given allocations at the 1st of April. Mm -hmm. And it is really for them to tell us where they are along the road. Which is what the report is going to ask, the expenditure towards these but allocations. What, what, what seems to have been coming from your chair, mm -hmm. Chairman, is that they should tell us what is going to be done when we ought to know what? No, we, no, because we, when we, when, when, remember, when it is that they are here at the standing finance, they wouldn't have had a schedule of the roads that they're going to be, um, the farm roads that they would be initiating. Right? Uh, I know that there, a list has been compiled now, so it is really to get an update from them on this amount that they are going to be spending on farm roads. What of that will be spent? And, 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 that, and that would not have been set out. It would not have said what the amount. Well, uh, at, 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 an amount would be in the budget itself. Yes. Yeah. But we don't know how much of that or if it is that they're going to be they're spending more than or what. So that is what we're seeking to find out. Very well, sir. Yes. Good. Thank you. So we have those two requests, and then we'll. are there any other, anything else from the members on requests? None? Okay. All right, let me welcome the permanent secretary and her team from the Ministry of Education. Youth and culture, uh, youth and information, right. Um, this is what, probably your third time here? Yeah, about fourth? Okay. Uh, it's a, a, a lot of, yeah. All right, so we're going to continue really the review of the report that you sent to us. Um, and there are some issues you have sent us a an update on some information we had requested from the CMU. Right. Um, before you, 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 going to the reports here, uh, there, there are a few issues that I wanted to, um, to raise, read what was sent to us. Um, I understand when I checked back with the clerk about the contract for for both um, the consultant, overseas consultant, and for the and for um, what's his name, the other consultant, Othney Lawrence. You might not have gotten any file. I think there's a copy of his. Was it? It was a report from him. The report, the, yeah, okay. but, but uh, his contract. Um, because one of the things that came up that, that, that jumped out at me with the, what was the payment schedule, which is what we asked for, for Gail Campbell-Donwell or Donwell-Campbell, 
is that it is a two-year contract, but an amount of call it 15 million has been paid out in less than a year. And what we wanted to, to in, in what came from CMU, was that she would be paid on submission of expenses and, and there's a reimbursable to those expenses. But to be paid out $15 million in a year, her contract, to my understanding, started in January of 2018, but by February, she was paid close to 50,000 US dollars. Right? So if we could get a copy of that and of her contract itself. But what is of more concern is the issue which is now in the media of the CMU employing lawyers to somewhat, I, 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 these are my words, um, frustrate the, the investigation of the um, FDI, FID. I understand also that the Auditor General is department is also having a similar issue in not being able to get documents from the CMU to, so that they can complete their investigations. But I would, what, I'm interested in finding out what is the Ministry's take on it since the CMU falls under the Ministry of Education and why is it that the CMU would want to frustrate an investigation like this? <laughs> And is it that these lawyers are representing CMU or individuals who do who works with the CMU? Okay, good morning, Chairman, and good morning to your members. And uh, just to say, we have the five institutions represented here. Edna Manley College for the Visual and Performing Arts is the, I think it is the fourth or the fifth institution. Uh, which would not have, only a little paragraph would have been in the original report which was submitted. I was told that the Caribbean Maritime University should be on standby in the event that you would need to speak to them. Some of the questions that you have asked just now are not questions that I can answer. So if we require them to be here, sir, then I will just do so if you will need to speak to them specifically about the contract relating to Gail Donwell and in terms of the payments themselves, as well as in terms of the provision of the documents to the Auditor General. Now, uh, Chairman, as it relates to the Ministry's take on the, on the matter, as government entities, we are to ensure that we comply with the government's rules and regulations, and we encourage our departments and agencies to ensure that we do that at all times. Uh, just to remind us, sir, that the CMU is run by a council, and the council gives the directives to the president and its members in terms of the operations of the institution. And the chairman of council reports to the minister. So they have that kind of latitude and authority to ensure that they are operating the institutions, institution in accordance with government procedures. Just to say that the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information has complied fully with the request of the Financial Investigation Division as well as the Auditor General, we have provided all documentation and reports that would have been requested. So what I can do at this time, sir, is just to ask the President to join us so that he could further respond to the other specific questions. Yeah, but P.S., the, the problem that I have is that it still falls under the Ministry of Education. And to the information that I have is that the University Council has been bypassed many a times by Professor Pinnock. I have information that he has again lied and deceived. Ch Ch hold on, hold on, hold on. Ch I'll Ch give you a Ch chance. Ch Ch Chairman, I, 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 uh, I, I, I think we may be um, going down the, the wrong path. 
um, in, in taking the. Um, <clears throat> the chairman, wh where you are actually heading is down the road where you have made you're making a determination that that there lies. I um, I do not know that we are actually in a position to make that determination. Say what what you may be able to say is that information has been given to this committee which seems to be in conflict with something else. But I, I certainly don't want us to, to, to reach a point where we're making a determination. No, Member, I, okay, because the information given to, to us in the first report or the second report that was given by CMU with what is, has been presented to us yesterday or was emailed to us by the clerk on the payments made to, 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 to Gail Campbell, Donwell Campbell, or Campbell Donwell, would seem as if there, there are contradiction between both. Eh? But, but, I am, I, but I am disturbed because even further that there is an entity which is the CMU that there seems to be irregularities and two state agencies are being avoided to do their to, to do their investigation without the management or, or, or of of the institution blocking other agencies from doing their investigation. And I'm just saying is that where, they, where, they, we, where we may be able on, to go, chairman, on, where member. we may be able to go, um, because w the the president of that institution and or his operatives will have to come before I, this committee. I am in and agreement. I, and I, and I, where, where I don't want this committee to, to go or to fall into error is, is that we start, you know, put, making findings. We, have not, we do not have the full benefit of all the information. So what we can do is to summon those persons. Well, if you allow me, if you allow me, member, because I'm, I was saying to the PS that the CMU falls under the Ministry of Education. Be it that the council is there to oversee the institutions, the ministry itself has a responsibility. And I cannot accept what the permanent secretary is saying to us, that the council itself, that there is a governing body. At the end of the day, yes, they answer to the minister. But if an... If if just on a point of order, Chair, ahead, please you don't lose your train of thought. The PS indicated that the CMU was on standby to be here for today. Could we just confirm or summon in him activating the standby arrangement while we have the other discussions? Not a problem. Chairman, I have contacted him and he has indicated that he's on his way. Go so ahead. in another 10 minutes right. he should be here. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chair, with, your, with the permission, I would like the Chief Financial Officer, Officer. also to be... Yes, yes, to be present. Please. See if you can make that request. Thank you, Madam. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So, until the president arrives and the team from the CMU, we'll go through the review of the the other agencies within the ministry. Uh, so, uh, Chairman, if you will allow me, sir, just to say who the heads of these institutions are, just uh, by way of introduction, we have Dr. Donna Powell Wilson, who is the Executive Director of the Council of Community Colleges, Dr. Damian Black, who is the Commissioner of the Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission, Mrs. Claudette Fletcher, who is the principal of the Brownstone Community College. Mrs. Miss, Miss McLean, please. Could you just, just put the face Identify. to the names? Okay, sir. So uh, let me start again. So Dr. Powell Wilson. And, okay. And Dr. Damian Black from JTEC. Mrs. Claudette Fletcher from Brownstone Community College. Mrs. Corinne Richards from Portmore Community College. Okay, sir. Dr. Nicolene DeGrasse Johnson 
uh, the principal of Edna Manley College for the Visual and Performing Arts. And uh, we also have support staff from the ministry as well as from Edna Manley College. So that's the team that we have with us here this morning, sir. All right. Uh, so we're going to start with the Council of Community Colleges. to give us our opening on the... All right, so, so. Uh, the Council of Community Colleges uh, is the entity that is actually responsible for the, the oversight of the community colleges that we have within the country. Uh, Dr. Powell Wilson plays the role of executive director, so at this time, sir, I will ask her to just give us a brief overview as well as a status report as to where we are in terms of achieving its mandate. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, committee members. Thank you very much, Dr. McLean. The CCCJ has responsibility to coordinate and supervise the work of the community colleges in Jamaica. Specifically, we do curriculum development and review, examination and assessment, awards and certification, and the professional development activities for our institutions. As it is now, there are 10 institutions that we provide these services to. to. The CCCJ, through the curriculum department and the relationship with the institutions, would have developed several curricula over the years. So we have now approximately 21 curricula at the associate level and another 15 at the bachelor level. We also have curricula at the certificate level. We respond to the needs of the country. So most of our programs would be in the technical and vocational area. We have an associate degree in architecture, architecture and construction technology engineering. We have an associate degree in health and wellness, um, agro-process agro-processing and business management. For these programs, in terms of quality assurance, we have to ensure that the product we are delivering is to an acceptable standard. So the CCCG would standardize the examinations for these programs, or examinations are held three times per year. After the examination process, we have the certification, again, ensuring that the students would have met the requirements for graduation. We work with our institutions to develop programs also for their particular region. So we would have worked with, for example, Portmore Community College in uh, providing some support in their curriculum for business process management. Yeah. Members, yeah, 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 yeah. just um, a bit of clarification for, in your working with the various community colleges in developing the, the um, curriculum, in the various programs, those those programs in the various communities. Although you mentioned that, like in the technical areas, to meet national demands, but various parts of the country, different locals will have specific demands. Um, figure, for example, those in the North Coast area, the tourism sector, you'll have a greater demand for the skills relevant to that. They determine the programs generally now 
in the respective areas that they need and then you work in tandem with them in refining those those um, curriculum that they put together yes member the institutions depending on the location the programs are offered accordingly so we can have a program and one that I think of of hand or automobile or associate degree in automobile that's offered by two institutions now because of the demand in those locations however the programs are available to all our institutions so once there's a demand then the program is available for that institution to offer but they're great the question the core of it is that they're locally driven they're locally driven yes sir member strutt thank you chairman through you to the principal portmore community college I have a concern there, Madam Principal. Portmore is known as a dormitory community. We have hundreds of thousands of people. M Member Jackson can testify to that living across there. But yet still we only have a small cohort of students attending 2,200, almost to one of the high schools there. Why are you not attracting many more students to the great Portmore Community College? And um, secondly, uh, your two-year course, the fees are so high that um, almost higher than that which prevails at the University of the West Indies and at UTEC. What considerations are given to when implementing these fee structures? Um, <clears throat> sorry, good morning, Chairman. Good morning, members. Member Stewart, to respond to the first question why the student numbers are as they are? Well, for one thing, currently we are significantly lacking in space. We have a very small campus, the main campus which we share with the Hart College of Construction Services. So though we have a small number of students, we um, actually on the main campus, we're practically at capacity, meaning we can't take more students. Um, in regards to the fees, I the last time we did comparison with the fees, with our associate degrees and our bachelor's degrees, we found that we were in fact at the lowest rung in terms of the fees that we're offering. Our fees are very affordable. Our associate degree fee is, I think, $150,000 per annum um, for the academic year. And therefore, that would be relatively affordable in comparison to other fees. Our bachelor's degree, for example, in business um, administration, which is an accredited degree, it's actually perhaps less than half of what that degree would cost. And we know that for a fact because we have done checks with other institutions. And also because of the clientele that we have, many of our students who attend that in the, the community college are students who they are for example, part-time students are working parents, some of them are single parent, and many of our students also, their socioeconomic background would prohibit them, although they would have had a qualification from going to other institutions. So I am not sure about the figures there. Thank you, Madam Principal. Just a follow-up question to your chairman, if I may. What is your capacity there now as it relates to your space? Could you accommodate more than the 2,200? And at a time when we, when we have the country is placing emphasis on education and training, why has all the Ministry of Education sought to improve your, your, your capacity to train more students for the demands of the country at this time? I have started at Portman Community College in 2015. And on taking on that responsibility, I know there has been ongoing discussions about the construction and expansion of the institution. I was given the documents for a piece of property adjoining to where the heart, College of Construction Services. So that was in place. In the discussions I've had with the Ministry of Education, that we have been working to put together a development plan so that we can look at what it is that we need, what type of space we need, what are the programs we would need to offer, 
and so forth. And that has begun. So we have started a development plan. In fact, if you drive along the Dyke Road now, you will notice that we would have cleared the section of the land that has been allocated for the college. And we are currently finalizing the development document. I think once that has happened, member, that that will help to stimulate and to further the discussion uh, with the ministry as well as other stakeholders that we are engaging. And is, is there a time frame that you're working Absolutely. with? Absolutely. We are, we are actually on, actually part of my team are actually at a retreat now currently working on the document. Sweet. So we're hoping to have that document completed before the beginning of the new academic year for submission to the permanent secretary of the ministry as well as other stakeholders. So yes, we are advanced in the planning. Mm -hmm. And then we're hoping to start building perhaps in another year or so. We're, we're very optimistic. Madam, Pres Madam Principal, you didn't mention whether or not the Ministry of Education has committed any funds towards that building capacity that you're short. Um, I respond to that question, uh, Member Jackson. Uh, we have been in dialogue, and once the plan has been submitted, then we will make representation to PIMSEC. And once PIMSEC has approved the project, then we will make sure that the allocation is made for the 2020. 2021 uh, financial year. We, depending on the nature of the plan, we would be able to start the developmental works within this current financial year. Uh, Member Stewart, we understand the issues and the, uh, the situation in Portmore, and we are committed to building out the community college so we can better serve the persons who are within that community, sir. Just a clarification though, so, so what we're saying is that the demand is there currently based on the applications that are coming, but we just don't have the capacity to bring on everybody on board during a current school year. That's what we're saying. Yes, sir. The demand is there, and as, I, as the PS pointed out, and my executive director, we do focus a lot on technical programs, even the management business process outsourcing, which is the first degree in the business process, we do need the facilities in order for us to take the students in. So our lab sizes and so forth would not necessarily All, make Also for clarity, Mr. Chairman, I just want to yeah. ask Ms. Richards, how, how well have you engaged in the evening class situation? Is it accepted in, in your institution just is able to speak to the overcrowding as you're saying or the lack of space there is yes member we actually start college at eight o'clock and we finish at 9 30 10. so we actually do run a complete day so we have the day college which begins at eight o'clock and that finishes somewhere classes normally finishes somewhere about five o'clock and then we start classes at 5 30 for persons who come into the part-time program and we also operate on the weekend. If you're asked a question, what space would you wish to have to accommodate? What number would you give them? We would need the college. We are looking at our target is 5,000 students. That's so we're looking for accommodation that we can house 5,000 students um, who will follow a similar pattern of attending classes. Member Campbell and Member Dunn. Um, may I just inquire as to what guides you in making the determination as to how many places you assign to each skill demand? Because um, I, I know that you have all these colleges splintered all over the place. Um, but do you just go ahead and, and decide that you want um, 10,000 persons in the BPO sector? What, what guides you in making the determination? Thank you, Member. We, of course, use, we begin, first of all, by looking at the overall development of the growth and development of the country. We fit that into what are the strategic imperatives of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. And to garner information to the development of programs, we use labor 
market research. We also carry out our own community research because you would recognize that a community college caters to the needs of the communities and its environs. So for example, this summer, we're doing a very comprehensive community survey that has started to find out what are some of the needs. And we also look at international trend. For example, we look at what is happening in the world of technology, where are the jobs going, and where are what we need to change. Hence our thrust on developing persons for the knowledge process outsourcing and the business process outsourcing, as well as the technical areas, areas that rely on technology. And so we are using whatever data is available both locally and internationally. Right, uh, I, and which segues beautifully into the question that I really want to ask. Um, having looked at the, the several um, surveys, and I notice our, our desire to go down the route of putting everything that we're doing online. All our processes, we, we seem to be going online with that. Where are we in developing the capacity to deal with cybersecurity? We are, we are currently training six members of staff to offer a program in cybersecurity beginning in September. We are partnering with an international company that are training our lecturers and will be providing the necessary virtual lab for the training of the students in cybersecurity. So we are aware of that and, and we are preparing to do that. You're partnering, partnering with, with a, company? a company that's an international company. International. They actually have an academy that, that trains persons for cybersecurity. In, in Singapore? No. No, it is in the United States, but they do offer that. Com they, that company does offer cybersecurity services to Jamaica. Very well. Member Dunn? We want to come. The mention in a passing way, member, is that the Portmore Community College does not serve the Portmore alone. In fact, it has a campus in Old Harbor, too, so it extends beyond Portmore. Good marketing pitch, member. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, looking at the brief that we got, um, the community colleges, you have five community colleges, tr three multidisciplinary colleges and one polytech college, right? Number one, where are these um, community colleges, et cetera, located? And two, the, the focus is on workforce training and strong community influence program. So number one, again, in the case of Portmore, why not establish a campus outside of Portmore itself? Because um, St. Catherine is a very large area. So, Old Arbor, et cetera, right? Was it there? Okay, okay, that's what I want to know where they are. And the third question is, in looking at some of the skill sets which are re required, there are some areas in the health um, that, that there is um, tremendous opportunity, not just for local local um, skill sets, but persons that can um, migrate to other territories to use those skill sets. Um, look at flea bottomy, renal technicians, pharmacy technicians. Are you looking at any of these particular programs? The, yes, member, we are. And there are colleges that do offer those programs. For example, we have a very good nursing program. We're looking at also how we can get into areas such as medical informatics and the other areas, pharmacy technician, we have. But as I mentioned earlier, there, sometimes the facilities are part of the challenges. So we have done that and we are expanding. And to answer your question about the establishment of the community colleges, we are right across the island. So we are at every area. And as our executive director would have pointed out, if Portmore, for example, develops a program and there are, there's a need in Montego Bay, then the program is shared through the Council of Community Colleges to Montego Bay. If a student is in Kingston and has to relocate to St. Anne, they can go to Brownstone Community College and complete there. So because we are a network of colleges and we're spread across, we're able to share programs across the island based on the needs and in response to the needs. Well, I'd ask earlier, could you just, for, just for my 
um, Purba, just to indicate where these colleges are, because I'm from Southeast St. Mary, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm not sure if there's any college all the way from St. Thomas, Portland, all the way into St. Anne. I, I will ask our executive before, director to... What, before, before Madam Edie, um, since we have segued into the community colleges, also there is Brownstone Community College represented here. So um, on our list here, we would have gone to uh, Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission. So I'm just suggesting that since we have segued into the community colleges, that we take Brownstone also you know, at the same time. So you can go ahead. Thank you very much, member. In terms of our location, we have coverage over the island. Even though there are 10 institutions that are supervised by the CCCJ now, at the time when we did the book, it was nine. We have now included Nakalva Polytechnic College. So there are approximately 21 sites. In St. Mary, as you mentioned, member, Monique College, the Monique College, has a campus in Port Mario. I'm not sure if that is in your constituency, but the Money College has a campus there. So Brownstone Community College has three campuses. College of Agriculture, one that's in Portland. Excelsior has five. They have a campus in St. Thomas. They have two, one on Mountain View, Deanery Road, Camp Ro South Camp Road, and Church Street. Knox Community College, there are three sites, Nocolva, uh, Cobbler, Spalding, and Maypen. Monique College has three, Monique, Port Mario, and Linstead. Montego Bay has two, Montego Bay, of course, and um, Frome. Portmore has two, Portmore and uh, Old Arbor, and there is Trenchtown in Trenchtown and Nocolva in uh, um, Hanover. I, I just, just want to find out um, through um, Elia and the PS, the community colleges itself, are they involved also in the unattached youth programs at any stage at all or any at all? Uh, at varying levels, uh, Chairman, I don't have the specific details, but some of these institutions are involved in the career advancement program. And uh, I will ask Dr. Powell Wilson if there are other unattached youth programs that the institutions are currently undertaking. Certainly, the community colleges, they are involved. Brownstone has a set of students in that program, so to Portmore and a number of other institutions. And those that have been coordinated through the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. And of course, I believe um, the institutions would get requests from different agencies. The CCCJ last year, in 2017, signed an MOU with an institution called FHI 360, and the target for that program would be unattached youth. And through that MOU, we, FHI 360, along with um, USAID, would sponsor 60 students to pursue associate degrees at um, five or four institutions. Before. All right, Member. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a little segue, since the PS spoke about the unattached youth program, I am having a, a challenge in my constituency. We, I launched a program in January, on January 15th. 100 and, 150 students, young people, registered, and they were tested, and they were rearing to go. And we are being frustrated because some accounts cannot be set up. Um, could you speak to it as to why is it taking so long for those accounts to be set up for the students to get started and all of that? The program is really, really not moving a pace and the students are frustrated at this time. 
Member Stewart, um, I have to apologize first and foremost for this frustration and steps will have to take will have to be taken for this to be resolved. I am assuming that you are talking about a program, the Unattached Youth Program through the Heart Trust NTA. We have had discussion with the Heart Trust NTA regarding the opening of the bank accounts. Uh, there is a new process that is being developed and we are being instructed in the ministry from the accountant general's department where there is a limit on the number of bank accounts that each institution is permitted to have. Uh, they have given us a guideline of no more than four institutions. We also, my principal financial officer no longer can give the approval for an account to be open. We have to prepare the document and send it to the accountant general for approval. So if the account does not fit into the guidelines that we have, it creates a problem. I have indicated to the Heart Trust NTA, sir, that we could actually look at using the accounts that were sent set up for the institutions that have an account for the career advancement program, or we try to find a different arrangement in terms of how the funds are executed. I have indicated to them, or you utilized rather, that we really should not prevent the opening of an account, which is a rule that Hart would have actually instituted to prevent them from starting the program. So what I will do, sir, leaving here, I will make contact with the managing director about this specific matter, and I will ensure, sir, that it is resolved and the students can be in training. Thank you. Member Dunn. Back to the, the issue of the, the community colleges and the program. Um, currently, is any of the programs internationally certified? And if no, are there any plans to certify them internationally with either joint MOU with, with universities in, in different areas of the world? Thank you very much, uh, Member. The programs that are offered in the community colleges, the CCCJ programs, they are accredited by our national accrediting body, that's UCG. So we, at the CCCG, we are very keen on the quality of our products. To that end, council has mandated that the CCCG be ISO certified um, within a certain time, and we are working to get that done. In addition to that, CCCG has forged several partnerships, MOU, with institutions abroad. And those MOUs would see our students, would see those institutions accepting or associate degree. So yes, we have institutions abroad that would have, um, based on their accreditation, they would have accredited our programs. I speak specifically to ACCA, that's the Association of Certified Chartered Accountants. They have reviewed our curricula in business administration, that's at the associate and the bachelor's level and they have certified, they have not certified, they have accredited those programs. What does that mean? Students who have completed the bachelor in business study accounting and accounting major and also finance management major will receive exemptions from ACCA examinations. So we continue to work to find other avenues or more avenues for students to receive international recognition. Hey, Chairman, why well, I mentioned that, um, and this goes back to the question I asked One before. second, member. Uh, students, I'm going to ask you if you're leaving to just be quiet so that you don't disturb the sitting, please. Go ahead, member. Chairman, well, I mentioned that um, it's a question I asked earlier about some, uh, some of the areas that you can look at in training, and you didn't in indicate that you are actually offering some of those health-related um, training, because this is an industry which has far greater um, use rather than just in Jamaica. I mean, we have so many persons who are graduating, and they're always looking for an avenue for self-advancement in various different shape and form, and therefore, 
for these health related industries which will always be here no matter what technology takes over right um, once we can train enough and certify them for international placement then I believe that we would do, be doing something for our people in Jamaica. So um, the question I'm asking is, these programs like phlebotomy, renal technicians, pharmacy technicians, etc., are you looking, if not so, looking at international partnership so that these certifications can have wider implications than just Jamaica? Certainly. We are doing that. Just recently, we got our Bachelor in Nursing accredited by the Nursing Council of Jamaica. And the next step is to approach CAMHP, which is the regional body for certification. So we're looking at getting our programs certified. We also partner, we also partner with some institutions in Canada with the Allied Health program that is offered. So having completed the program here, I um, believe one of the arrangement is that the persons can do the practicum in the country. I think it's in Canada. So we are looking at that. Mr. Well, Chairman, through you to the good lady that was speaking, Dr. Powell Wilson. Thank you. Uh, how what is interest shown in the area of pharma, pharmacy technician by student on a whole? The, we have not received any request from the institutions regarding developing a program for that. Um, but we continue to look at the labor market trends to see if there's a need for that program. We would have certainly received um, some feedback, some indication, but at this time, it is not what would warrant a program to be developed. So we continue to look for that one in particular. I could just add to that um, discussion. The the, the programs, let's, let's call them the offshoot shoot progr shoot programs from the, within the medical uh, industry, are programs that we are finding that are gradually emerging in terms of interest to, to have facilities that are internationally accredited so that our people can move to wherever the opportunities are. This has been emerging. The University of Technology, they have a very structured pharmaceutical program, but I believe the challenge is that pharmacists, for example, do not retire. And so sometimes there is also a challenge for the younger persons to be employed. And so the ministry has been working with the Caribbean School of Medical Sciences, which is a relatively new medical institution, not only to focus on the training of doctors as well as uh, dental uh, persons in dentistry, but also to look at some of those areas that Member Dunn also mentioned. The, uh, the discussion is for partnership with uh, the, many of the associations overseas, and so with this partnership we will see them getting the international, international certification. Also to say that Jamaica uh, in partnership, our body for accreditation for those areas is CAMHP, and CAMHP is also affiliated to the international uh, universities as well. And there is actually a, a plan that they have in place to ensure that there is some alignment by 2021, where if persons in the medical field here are certified, then they will have some international recognition for their certification. We are also looking to, which I know you would be interested in, in starting to offer some college credits on our high school campuses in the medical field so that we can boost the interest of our children in science and to actually align them to a particular career before they leave the grade 13 within our high school. So a part of the associate degree program that we are currently pursuing is to have some of those areas in phlebotomy, pharmacies, dental, technician, hygiene, and so on. 
Mr. Chairman, I, I do, I hear Dr. McLean and I also understand where she is going, but correct me if I'm wrong, the pharmacy technician is a step below being a pharmacist. And what I do, several steps, thanks doctor. Therefore, I, I know, because I've heard it across the western belt of the country, that there is shortage or shortages of pharmacist technicians. And those are the persons who you know assist in, in the pharmacies. So it has always been on the tip of my tongue to ask a question. Why is it, or if there is, it is not being promulgated enough so that it will encourage youngsters. So I can also start by being becoming a pharmacist technician. Fortunately, sir, I don't have the data in terms of the shortage, but what we can do is to get the, the, the information and we can provide that at a later date. Uh, also, what we will be able to do is to look to see where we can start those actually developing courses in different areas of our community colleges so we can start building our young people in that regard. So one last thing, Mr. Chairman. I know because I have been in dialogue with HART if there was a written program, a written curriculum for the pharmacist technician, and they don't have it. So I maybe if you can dialogue with them to, to get it done and have it offered because... Quick addendum, that's a short one. Um, much been asked about the pharmacy technicians. What about medical transcription? Once ago it was a high point and then some years ago and it's down. Um, isn't there some demand for that um, as part of the ICT um, sector? Um, Dr. Powell Wilson will respond. We'll do a, f a respond for the, to the previous question and then a follow up. Thank you very much, Dr. McLean. Um, we, the colleges, the community colleges, through franchising agreements, would, they are offering the pharmacy, pharmaceutical technology program that is offered by UTEC. So Brownstone Community College offers the first year of that program. That's a pharmaceutical technology. Portmore Community College offers pharmacy technician that also is a Portmore Community College, that, al that also is a franchise agreement with UTEC. What we do at the council, we try not to duplicate efforts. Hence, the colleges would try to franchise programs from institutions, programs that are available and where the needs are. Well, I, I, since we, we're just closing off this section here, because uh, just listening to the discussion, um, I'm a product of Exed Community College, yeah? and the, the, the importance that community college, colleges had then, uh, and I went in the 80s, late 80s, to what it is now is a far cry from what it used to be in our educational structure. And I, I've done quite a bit of work with Knox Community College as a member of parliament. And you can see that they're, 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 they're the synergy between probably the ministry, the communities, the community colleges again. It would have been good to see the community colleges taking on more of these unattached youth programs, um, you know, which helps them with revenue at the same time. But the importance of the community colleges have been watered down. And I still feel that they have a very important place in the whole educational structure. We have too many students leaving high school without any subjects. The program I did with Knox was for them to take on those who left without subjects, to take them on for two years to at least bring them back to doing three subjects. We're allowing these private, private businesses to take monies from these students without giving them a proper to do their CSEC at a later stage. 
and I think that the, the community college themselves should be re-engaged in taking on that cohort of, of students that would have left high schools in to continue in their education. So it's something I'd, I'd urge you to look at. Thank you very much, Chairman. Just If you could just permit me, sir, to say to Member Jackson that the area of medical transcription is an area of focus in the business processing, outsourcing industry, because they need a number of those persons for the call centers. So steps are being taken working with specific companies to develop our students in those areas, sir. So it, has, it started a couple of months ago, and we are expecting to see that increase in. It started a couple of months ago. In terms of the preparation of persons for medical transcription. No, I mean, that's, that's okay. Preparation of persons for training or preparation of persons who have been trained? So, no, they have not yet been trained because first we have to make sure that we are guided by the industry in terms of the areas of focus. Let's say the curriculum. And from there we move to recruiting the persons to be trained and the placement in the companies accordingly. So you have started the preparation. So we have started the preparation for, for training, the training. For the training. And when do you expect to have the training on street? So we expect for the beginning of the new school year. We will, yes, we will start having persons in Which training institutions? for the industry. Which? Uh, we do this through the career advancement program, so we identify those institutions that are close to where the business processing outsourcing companies are. The request is mainly within the western side of the island at this time, sir. And there's a lot of them in the corporate area, in the Kingston yes. metropolitan area. Well, just in terms of the ones that we have started the dialogue with, but of course it is ongoing. There is a, a board that focuses specifically on the global outsourcing industry, and so we channel the discussion through that board and they guide us accordingly. As, as I suggest that you have a discussion with JAMPRO that interface with these entities to, to yes. guide you in terms of the concentration. Because yes. I know a lot of them are in the Kingston area, and a lot of them are growing now in the Portmore area. Yes, sir. They also uh, sit on the board, sir, and provide the data accordingly. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, morning, everybody. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Member Phillips, for chairing. Member Don, I want to make a brief intervention. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you notice, I'm on this thing about international certification, right? And I know the premise of the community college is that you are locally driven by the needs of the communities, right? But I mean, I believe in the global context in which we're living now, and with the advent of BPO and all these services that are required by these international organizations. I'm not sure if you have done it already, or CCJ has looked at it, you know, what is your five-year plan? What is your 10-year plan? And I believe that plan should take into consideration the international component and certification, and not just local-driven issue anymore. So I'd like to know if this is something under consideration, and what is your five-year plan looking at? I mean, Dr. McLean mentioned about um, in the medical transcription area, and that you know you're driven by the needs of what is happening, but these are new and emerging areas that has vast implication for employment for a lot of persons. So, what is this plan if you do have any? And is there any steps to move away just from local issue to internationalize? You know what you do at these community colleges, and this will also increase the status, Dr. Wilson, of the community colleges. Thank you very much for that, member. The CCCJ has just recently received, uh, well, was inducted into this Honor Society Phi Theta Kappa. For that to happen, the institution Phi Theta Kappa would have had to examine our curricula to ensure that it is in keeping with their international standards. So we are making steps. We, are, we have approached some of these institutions to 
internationalize or globalize education. So Phi Theta Kappa is one. I spoke earlier about um, ACCA. Some of our institutions through the Ministry of Education would have received the American Hotel and Lodging Education, which is another international certification. So we continue to look for these opportunities. We're recognizing that we're living in a global world and we have to internationalize our education. In terms of our strategic plan over the next five years, certainly internationalization of our programs, we are looking at that. As it is now, we offer our curricula to three institutions in the Caribbean. So we franchise our program to Turks and Caicos Island Community College, Anguilla Community College, and the Bahamas Baptist Community College. In doing so, that is internationalizing the product that we have here as well. Thank you. All right, members, I'm, I'm going to move on. But before I do, I just have two very quick questions for you, if you could just. Number one, could you just inform us, what's the proportion of the, the revenue that you have to operate the community college? What proportion is tuition and what proportion is government subvention? In other words, to what extent is the, is the, is the education subsidized by a government subvention in terms of the overall picture? Okay, the CCCJ, as an agency of the Minister of Education, Youth and Information, we receive a subvention, and um, that subvention... No, 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 I'm not talking, I'm talking the community colleges, the, the colleges in general. In other words, a community college, what percentage of its, the, 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 its operating expenses, its total revenue, are, come from government, and what percentage come from tuition? Chairman, we have two community colleges here, uh, and I will ask uh, them to just speak in terms of the, the percentage as it relates to their specific institution. Right, just so that we can get an right. idea, but because I suspect to, they would be close together. Just to say, sir, in terms of, if I should just, for example, the ministry currently provides $279 million to Portmore Community College and $251 million to the Brownstone Community College. Beautiful. And this actually assists me with the payment of the yeah, staff but it is, but it's a cost. It's a, it's a so subvention. So how much do they raise, each right. one of them, from tuition? Right. So I'll ask Mrs. Richards and then Dr. Fletcher to speak on that. Morning, Mr. Yes, um, as PS said, um, Chairman, the the salaries of full-time staff are paid through the subvention. That's 259 million. Right, for you. and that is approximately one third from the figures I'm looking at here. Approximately one third of our operating. Costs. So, so tuition. So, how much do you um, you get? 750 million, roughly. We we from get, tuition. No. No, sir. We for to our tuition, both part and full time is running into somewhere a little bit over 400. So, so. hold on. So if that's 400, so, mm -hmm. so you're saying a third of it is. No, no, no. The, sorry, the fees, the, the 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 salaries, the tuition is approximately 400 million, and then that would be added to what we get to the subvention. Right. Which is about seven. So your total operating cost is about 650, 660 million. About that, or around right. about so that. So basically, what you're saying is that about 250 million is the government subvention, mm -hmm. and 400 from tuition. So it's a little, a little under, a little over a third mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. is the government, and mm -hmm. and two thirds would come from tuition. Right. All right. Um, Yeah, 
Well, I, 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 well, I get the question. Let me just let me just finish off this, and then, yes. Thank you, sir. As far as fees would be concerned, we spend almost 200 million collected from fees on our operation. How much, from how, much the, do you, how much do you collect from government? 200. 251 million for subvention. You get 251 from subvention, so you're, you're about the same. Um, and you collect how much in fees? Approximately 200 million in fees. So why is it that they are able to, their fees, they're collecting twice as much fees um, as you are in terms of versus subvention? So in other words, yeah. your operating costs. Your, yours is subsidized by 50% while theirs is subsidized no. by just over. Sorry, Chair. I, I apologize. I made an error. I was looking at the total for two years. I apologize. So for a year, for both our tuition is just, our total tuition collection is just over 200 billion. Oh, 200 all right. And, and I'm sorry. And I was looking at two, two years. The same, 259. So you're both <laughs> about... 279 million for okay, so, and Roundstone right. is 251. All right, and both of them are collecting about 200 million. Mm -hmm. So basically, okay. what you're, mm, so you're saying it's just government assistance is just over 50 percent of the cost. Subsidized is just about 50 percent of the cost of the education, a little more than. That's okay. correct. Um, there was a question, and I, if I recall, the question is, what is the average cost? What is it the average fee or the average cost? Training uh, uh, one yeah. of the technicians or whichever program they're involved in. Yeah, the, in other words, each student, what's the average cost of? Well, I suppose we could divide it. How many persons do you have in your institutions? How many students? Right. So based on that figure, it would work out to just about $200,000 per annum if we use a total number of students versus a total number of income that we have to so just about $200,000 per student for the per annum. And they, so they would pay about half of it and government subsidizes the other half? Basically, sir, if you look at it right. that way. The, 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 the second question, and, and, and maybe back to the overall institutions, do you track the proportion of graduates that are employed, having, you, having trained somebody, once they are now released into the workforce, what proportion are, tra are, are employed in the first year, second year, third year? I suspect that there would be some tracking of that based on the fact that many have student loans, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any idea, any numbers with regard to that? Continue on that, sorry. And I mean, do you offer job placement fears? Pardon? I didn't get that. Yes. In addition to that, I mean, do they offer job placement fears? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, chair? Sorry. Okay. Okay, yes, of course. Okay, thank you very much, Chair. For, from the council's perspective, we have seen the need to do this research in tracking our graduates. And uh, last year, council engaged a researcher to look at the economic input, economic input, impact, sorry, the economic impact of the community college graduates from the system. The researcher is still doing uh, the work um, in January, he presented draft data at our conference. So we are still within the period in which the researcher is working. So once that is completed, then we'll have the information to share. But with, with due respect, you're, 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 you're what? The church, what's your body the, is? The, the Council of Community Colleges of Jamaica. But the council has been in operation for some time, or it's new? No, it, it's not. We are not new. We have been in operation for some time, but we are just em, engaging in that process. 
the reason I'm saying is that I think one of your key indicators is the employability of the students you're putting out. So there must be some data. In other words, you have not in all this time done any study to see what ratio of students that you graduate are being employed? We, the, in 2015-16, JTEC, that's the Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission, did a study of the community colleges and the impact. And um, there may be some information there which I'm not remembering, but we can have that well, available. You, you know, quite frankly, I must tell you, sometimes we do these studies. And I'm very grateful. I mean, I'm happy that you're doing a study on the impact of it. But I think far more relevant to us is, is are these programs the right programs? Are they having the results we want? Are the persons being employed? And I think that that wouldn't be a difficult thing. Um, simply just send out a survey. You have a list of your students. Send out how many are employed, how many are not employed. I'm sure the data is reflected also in the repayment of whatever loans you have. And at least get to the bottom of it. I would have thought this would have been a core function of your organization. But how long do you think it would take you to get some information like that to us? The study that was done by JTEC, we have that, so that we can share with PSR. Sure, I'm, I'm, and, and let me be frank with you. I mean, sometimes we get these studies, and um, when you go through the study, you don't really come out with the answer to the question that you ask. I, I'm sure the committee would prefer to just, we, we'd love to get the, that, but mm -hmm. it may be good if you could just tell us if you can distill it, you know, in year one, year two, year three, what percentage of our students are being employed because it will guide how we pace, how we um, treat with the community colleges. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but Chairman, maybe uh, Mrs. Richards, Portmore, and Brownstone would want to speak about the specific data that they keep. Oh, they may have it. Yes, yes. Yes, excellent. Go ahead. It's not working? Um, where is the, oh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah, push on the mic a little bit, just, no, in the, in the base, yeah. Okay, all right. Um. Just to say that we do what is known as tracer studies at the college. So we, through our student services department, and we have a placement officer so when the students have completed, they are placed to do work experience. And for the most part, we, the data that we have, beginning with the full-time students, the more than 50% of our students in the last report that I saw would have gained employment. But we, would, we are continuing. In regards to the part-time program, that is over 90%. Because there, most of the students would be employed to various They're really just doing so some far. further right, education. Right, and so they're doing further. But what we have been doing is looking at the students as they progress. And so while some might take a while to get employment, then after a while they do. What I do know for a fact is that when we get requests for students from various organizations, we are unable to find students who are not employed to fill these positions. So that's where we are. So what we're doing now, we're looking at how we can ensure that all the data is put together and, and available. Well, I, I, I think maybe Anya should share it. I think what, what we would like is if, are you, sorry, Ms. Fletcher, is it, are you, yes, are, do you have a similar experience or do you have a That's different? correct. That's correct, right. Chairman. Could, could we please, if, if you could, just do a report to us. I think it may be good in our report to Parliament for us to be able to, to indicate what we see as a level of, of effectiveness. Um, and I would suggest that moving forward that this be an integral part of the, the analysis of, of these community colleges and the programs. Um, th yes, there's a, yes, Dr. Dr. Black. Uh, thank you, Chair. 
I just wanted to indicate that the studies referenced by Dr. Paul Wilson spoke to reviews by the Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission with regard to... By the what? Sorry? By the Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission. We facilitated okay. research on both yes. the community colleges and the teachers' colleges, uh -huh. looking at ways and to develop and implement strategies to improve the positioning and the perception of the community colleges in the first place, and then secondly, looking at strength in their internal quality assurance mechanisms. And so essentially, that was the focus of these studies as opposed to the impact that, that you're speaking to. But secondly, though, through the, the accreditation visits conducted by, for example, the University Council of Jamaica, we very often receive, we have received data which would indicate the issues of employability and so on. And as you would very well appreciate that employability does go or is associated with the programs. So the extent to which in Montego Bay, it's hospitality programs and the quality, the perception, and the extent to which there is a significant collaboration with industry. Those graduates, I'm sorry, those persons, even before they graduate, are in pulled and engaged Excellent. by industry. Well, well, uh, and I just yeah, wanted well. to say quickly one other thing to remember, Don? Don, who had asked about international certification, etc. that emphasis. As Dr. Paul Wilson indicated, the individual colleges and then certainly the CCCJ as a whole in coordinating the effort would define strategies to expand their program offerings, both to welcome students here and for placement over and to have locations overseas. But in terms of international certification to facilitate global mobility by way of accreditation, yes, the two leading bodies, the University Council of Jamaica and the National Council on Technical Vocational Education and Training, and their credit and their practices, their brands, the results of their decisions are accepted, generally speaking. Many institutions, however, have adopted strategies. So, so for example, there's one out of the UK, the Accreditation Service for International Colleges and Universities, ASIC. And so some of our local institutions have sought to secure that brand of approval to be able to say to international students, we have been certified, we have been assessed, sorry, and certified by international players. And independent on the technical area, the, Amer the America, Americans, oh, sorry, in, in the USA, there is this associate ABET, which deals with accreditation for engineering. And so some of our entities here in Jamaica, UE, UTEC, have approached them. CMU is here, I know, but the, the International Maritime Certification. So dependent on the areas of specialization, persons secure their accreditation as appropriate in Jamaica, and then they will seek to add with regard to specialized programs as may be required to facilitate the mobility of their students. In TVET, as I said, NC TVET, but also the apprenticeship board, in, well, no part of heart, but in terms of the red seal certification. The PS spoke to the career advancement program, and one of the programs being utilized there is the diplomas in engineering offered by City and Gills. It's a well-known international brand. So the attempt is there to a mix of Jamaican, regional, and then certain international cert qualifications to offer And as required, institutions then seek accreditation as appropriate during the matter of All right, thank you. To carry on a point that the uh, chairman mentioned before, which I, I find a little bit surprising, although obviously data might be there, but fragmented, yeah. and it's to do with the track and trace. Since you're community driven, and you are locally driven with, your, with, with some of the programs that you do. I mean, track and trace is so important because how do you know if you have been successful? And how do you know what adjustments need to be done to the programs, right? And, and so, so I'm, I'm agreeing with the chairman on this particular point. But what I also like to see, chairman, if they could also supply us, chairman, if they could also supply us with your five-year plan. I would like to see that five-year plan for community colleges in Jamaica. And where are we taking this? What is the next level that we are taking this organization? All right. Absolutely. I'm going to move on now. But just before I move on, um, Dr. Black, I, 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 just to let you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that information is power. And persons, the more information they have, the better they will be able to take their decisions. Now, 
you would be the tertiary institution. So you're wider. You deal with both the community colleges and the university. I, so again, I, I, I think this could be pointed at you specifically. Look, you may have a whole series of, of different faculties in, in the university, in, U, in, in UTEC, um, uh, University of Technology, you may have the community college. I believe that part, I mean, impact studies are great for the ministry and its technicians, but quite frankly, if, if I know that if I study law, in the first year, I have 30% chance of getting employment. But if I study engineering, I get 80. Or if I study sociology, I have 50. And if I study psychology, I have 90. It will guide my decision. And I think that these studies are not just for us in this room as policymakers to do as we feel. I think that this information should be done by you taking public put on the websites, your website now would be one would have more credibility than say, uh, uh, I mean, with respect, maybe um, Brownstone or Portmore or University of Technology because they may want to sort of push their programs. But if you are saying, do this, do that, if I want employment and I have a choice between three or four things and I find that this is the better one at this time, it helps my judgment. So I believe it's incumbent on you and your organization to do these things, simplify them. Just answer the basic question, how is the, the employability of these programs? List it out so that young people trying to make a decision can go to our website and say, this was useful for me. All right, members, I want to now move on. We have two things left on the agenda, and I just want to briefly, one of them is Edmund Malley College um, of the Visual and Performing Arts, and there were some additional questions I asked, I understand, of Caribbean Maritime Institute. Which we had started with, so I suggest you just pick up You'd from like there. to finish that first. Okay. Um, the Caribbean Maritime Institute, um, I, I really, so some questions were asked. I was not present at the time. Could they be repeated then, please? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Since I, I'm the person who had posited those questions and Professor Pinnock is here. Chair, we got a, a printout of the payment. We had asked about the payments made to Gail Dunwell Campbell. Is she Dunwell Campbell or Campbell Dunwell? Campbell Dunwell. Campbell Dunwell. All right. Um, well, two things, Prof. Are these all the payments that have been made to? All the payments. You see two columns. One is payments and one is receipts. Yes. yes. So these are all the payments that have yes. been made to her. Yes, sir. Yeah? And this says that it is in the U.S. 114,722. That's correct. Equivalent, call it 15,000, 15 million Jamaican dollars. The second question that I'd ask then is, in your schedule of consultants to, her, to us, it says that her remuneration is given by reimbursable expense contract, pay payment made on presentation of invoices. Can you explain for me? That's correct, sir. It's not, a, not, a, not an employment, but it's for reimbursement. And you see the two columns. One has to do with the monies that you receive, which is three times the amount on the other side. So. For example, there will be meetings or stage uh, an event for CMU and, you know, to raise money and so on. So those are what we'd pay for. So you are saying that by your submission to us that between her first invoice date was the 3rd of January 2018 and her 
contract with the CMU started when? The contract, the official contract started the 12th of January. But the, it goes back before that because you'd have to put things on the ground. In other words, we would not have entered into a contract until we were sure that monies were actually coming in. So that was why we dragged it to that stage. So, and so if I'm to go by her remuneration agreement between the 3rd of January when she submitted the first invoice to the 1st of December 2018, she would have been paid $15 million Jamaican. So these, you are saying that those were reimbursable expenses? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. All right. Chairman, I have a copy here of an agreement for services between, and I can share it, uh, between uh, uh, Gail Campbell Donwell and the CMU. Item 5 states compensation for services provided here under consultant shall be paid the sum of United States $155,000. So that is the maximum. That is the, the life of the contract. For yes, two sir. years? Yes, sir. So you would have paid out 114000 of that within the first year of her contract? Yes, sir. Because, as you know, um, it takes time. You have no, to but the reason why I ask yes. because you, you said that you're, she's paid on reimbursable. But the contract itself now is saying that she has a, a, a comp sh the co consultant shall be paid the sum of. The, this doesn't state anything about reimbursements. Okay? It went further to say consultant or consultants, employees shall only be entitled to payment or reimbursement for travel expenses, food, lodging, any other. Um, allowances, equipment, supplies, or similar, similar items if authorized in advance by client. So what you're basically saying to me here by this is that all her, for the two years, the balance that you would basically have for her could carry her to do out all the work that she's, she was contracted to do? Well. The whole arrangement, initially, we were looking for a, a total of $2 million US. That was the initial agreement in grant funding and et cetera, et cetera. But when you write grant funding, you, you load up in the earlier part of the agreement. But the, the results would come a year, a year and a half after. Yes, sir. The results the would one, come one. a year, a year and a half. Because I see here that by the, by the 26th, 20th of February, there are two invoices that came that you basically paid out $2.75 million. This is less than two months after her employment. Yes, sir. What and the two invoices are the same amount, having the same date. Yes, sir. That's correct. Because what as I said before, this, you'd have to sow the seeds. Many of these projects would have started from 2017. But we would not have entered the agreement until we were sure some monies would start to come into CMU. I, 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 I'm not following you there. All right. Well, to get grant funding or to raise money, you'd have to get in people's budget and everything. So those were started from the previous years. So what I always look at, and you said, sir, and you're correct, because um, having gone into a university, we, what we get is less than... 29% of our revenues come from the government. So I had to hit the road early to see how I can get funding from everywhere. So this was, I had to jump at it, and whoever had funding, I just had to rush yeah, because. So this is, this is what presents you, sir. So, but my litmus test is always, I must collect more than I pay out. And but here, I also have in my possession, as you said, that the only payments that have been made to Gail Donwell Campbell, which is what is given here. But I also have a copy of an invoice from the said person 
dated February 18th, so well, 20, 20th of February 2018, for the amount of 70,000 US dollars. Uh, it said submitted for approval. Was this? That was the total amount on the invoice, but we had to pay according to cash flows. So that was the total amount. So in other words, the 114,000 that would have been covered in there. Yes, sir. No. no. Come again. No, you can get a copy. I have no problem. You don't have it. No? Uh, orderly, can you? Yeah, get a copy. Okay. Get some copy. So, yeah, I think, um, members, only if you could, if we could get the copies of both, or whatever, uh, that, that, whatever. No, no, not a problem, Chuck. But this, this is it. Sir, the, this is it. This is in their... Sir, the file submitted by CMU. Absolutely. Sir, the invoice is actually, if you look at the dates of the 20th of February, those have been part payments of the said invoice for the 70,000. So, so this, so this, yeah, but this here says invoice 20th of February. So how many invoices for the 20th of February? That says the one invoice for the 70,000. But what we put here is the actual giving of the payout of the bank. I'm sorry about that. That was not properly written. The chairman, well, I, I bring this up because there seems to be the, 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 the tardiness of the, even their accounting practices. Huh? Because I still can't see how you're going to pay out a two year contract and pay out 90% of that contract within the first year. And then you're telling me that you're going to see results coming a year, a year and a half when I'm sure that she has work, work to do. Because I also have here payments scheduled for Gail Campbell Dunwell, which is stamped by the Maritime University. But the figures on this chairman are completely different. One is showing payment of 15.4 million while well, this is showing 14.9. Mr. Chairman, on a point of order, sir, please. And the payments, Sorry, payments, sir. hold on a moment, you can ask a question. But I can't much. follow the situation, Mr. Chairman, I have no document. I'm going to let her so print allow the her to go and come back, no, please. Answer, All right, let, 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 let him ask his question, and Only then I would ask, sir. So I can't give it to us. Yeah, he can't so ask, ask. we're well, giving up. Could we, look, no, 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 that's not, that's not. Could you give that one to the clerk? Sure. Let her photocopy that and as soon as you are finished here yeah, exactly thank you Proceed. who is Doreen Miller we got instructions for a few invoices to be paid and an account for Doreen Miller sir that was on the instruction on the invoice from who from gave you those instructions Mrs. Donwell and three million eight hundred and fifty three five hundred would have been paid out to Doreen Miller? That's correct, sir. And a balance of 11 million 604750 paid out to Gail Donwell? That's correct, sir. Chairman, if my memory serves me well, in media reports, this Doreen Miller was someone employed to the minister, the then minister. Oh, in what capacity? It was huh? Also, will help her to my. Oh. Oh, oh there. Chairman. Oh, there. I ask these questions oh, as there. my previous question to the permanent secretary. In why is it at this point in time that, as media reports have given it, that there is a reluctancy? on behalf of the CMU to cooperate with the FID and the Auditor General's department in, 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 um, in providing documents. Sir, and let me say it categorically, there's no such thing. Most of the, we got a court order, sir, 
without an affidavit. And the lawyers among here would know that is an And the reason process. why you got the court order is because there has been reluctancy. And that is not true because the documents that they have asked for, 95% of them have already been supplied, either by us or through the Ministry of Education. Sir, this thing borders on becoming personal. Ask, miss, miss, this has become what, sir? Excuse me? No, um, I'm just saying some of it borders on becoming personal. Personal? <laughs> you know, that, that's... that's not from this house, sir. No, 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 but, but the reason why you keep coming back here, Prof, is that... No, because if there are more information to show... Well, they've, no, Chairman, please can't, can't They've protect, all gone to be, to be photocopied, and we will have so the information. Please. So each time I take the ball, you can get a copy. No, no but, well, the, but Professor the one thing Pinnock the came here and said that there is a contract with reimbursable expenses to Gail Campbell Dunwell. No. Eh? And, and, and I have produced where the contract doesn't speak about reimbursables. Right? So to, to me, Chairman, that each time Professor Pinnock comes to the, to the committee, you know, you're going to wait and that way you know. No, no, Each time no, that... No, no, chairman, Chairman, chair, Chairman, I, no, I, I, I think we, we have... Member Phillips ought to be fair to us. No, go ahead. Go I'm, ahead, I'm, Member I'm, I'm, I'm saying this <clears throat> against the background uh, that I've asked a very simple question as to whether the documents he's relying on, which we don't have the benefit of having, are they original documents to, so that when they are being put to Professor Pinnock, can he say that they are the same documents which are originated from from member member Campbell? Right. I, I, it has been paid, please. It has been patently clear to me so far that every question that member Phillips has asked okay. is, in, is the same by, is the yeah. same documents. Please allow me the same documents that 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 um, Professor Pinnock has been relying and he has been answering all the questions. I would, I would ask you. The fairness, only Chairman, the demands fairness. Demands. And I'm saying we have how many members of this committee? So and I, how is it can can that reside solely in in, in, in the arms so of, I, of one so member? So I've made the point. We have we have indicated that all the documents Chairman, may I just remind public. you so that, you, that your position Chairman, is as Chairman to, and you are descending into the arena which is not in keeping with good practice. Chairman, since I've moved on to the issue of, of um, the issue of CMU employing three lawyers to to um, Chairman, with your permission, the member raised something earlier on um, which I wasn't too clear on. All right. So do you want him to finish before I come Member, back? please, let me, let me let member finish complete well, like and, 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 I will, and I will then we have, and then. We are saying it's a source document, sir. We are saying that whatever Mr. Phillips so, is a source document, and I'd like to compare it with what has been given. But what I would like to, to, to find out from the uh, PS, is it normal that an agency like the auditor, such as the Auditor General, or in this case, the FID. No, member, please hold on a second, Member Phillips. Member Jackson, Member Clark, please allow Member Phillips. It, it's very difficult with the crosstalk to keep your thoughts straight. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Is it normal in this case for, 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 for the FID or any government entity? would like information from another huh, that they would need to produce a court document to subpoena those documents? Member, if I may say, sir, I really can't speak to this being normal because this kind of investigation is new to me as the acting permanent secretary. What I can, however, say to you, sir, is that as it relates to documents that were requested, 
by both, we have tried as best as possible to provide the documents. There that are some is, that documents. Is the ministry. And there are some documents that were requested from CMU for the the investigators as well as the Auditor General that we had to get from CMU and they complied on a timely basis and those documents were provided. So the court order actually came to my attention as a surprise from CMU. CMU actually sent me an email to indicate the documents that were being requested. Some of those documents have already been provided, sir. So what would drive the, the, the FID to reach to this stage? Well, sir, let me just say this. Over 600 documents have been requested, and up to yesterday, only 61 were outstanding, of which we are getting most of them today. I made a statement, and I'll say it very boldly. Some of this borders not, it borders on being personal, and some of it, I say, could tantamount to harassment, sir. Bye. I'll leave it there. No, but <laughs> All right. Um, um, one more, but go ahead. You, just one more. If you, you want to do your I one, and additional. then. All right, Chairman. Um, all right, Chairman, I bet good order. I don't want to go to something else. I and just want to. All right, Member Jackson. Then I have Member Paul raised. Yeah. I say raised his hand in the back. Two things. The copy of the contract that Professor alluded to, that my colleague read. First, compensation for services provided here under consultant shall be paid the sum of United States $150,000. Consultant or consultant's employee shall only be entitled to payment or reimbursement for travel expenses, food, lodging, any per diem allowance, equipment, supplies, or similar items if authorized in advance. I saw nothing about, you said it was a $150,000 cap. It didn't, it didn't, um, Yes, sir. I mean, Me, cumulatively, it would be will not exceed 150,000. That's, that's, that's correct, sir. That's correct. Okay. It never say that here. Yeah. My other question, though, the chairman, the payments to this Doreen Miller, and I take it it is for in the context of this contractual arrangement with Miss yeah. Campbell Dunwell. You are paying invoices as per instruction from your contracting party, party to a third party. And they would have given that in writing. Instructions on the Written invoice. Instructions. Yes, and it would be for particular services provided. I think. Because you are paying in respect to these expenses incurred in the compensation arrangement. That's correct, sir. To be part of the overall. Yeah. That so should they, have given instructions. Right. So what okay. service did she instruct that Miss Doreen Millard provided for which you have been asked to pay? So well, it's things, but she would have requested on specific invoices to actually pay this to an account and a name, of which we have no relationship. No, no, no. You have a contract with Miss Dun Dun Campbell Dunswell to provide certain services, and in your contract, you set out what you are undertaking to pay for. If That's she, correct. Right. So she would have been making invoice claims in respect of those agreed services. Yes, sir. It did not vary from it. Yeah. What are those agreed services for which Ms. Doreen Miller has provided to the CMU through her? So the it varies, but it has to do with part of the reimbursable. She'd have asked that this amount be paid to this account. It's her overall payment, and she would ask that specifically certain amount be paid to a particular no, account. I, 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 remember, I, I remember clearly at this very committee, Chairman, when we were doing Petrojam, and the consultant, what was his name, Arch or something, was asked to the company to pay an amount to a company or entity for which Petrojam was never contracted to. And that was deemed improper. Because the no, no, you... No, 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 I, no, I, no, I am, I, am, I just need some guidance. I have a difficulty, I have a difficulty. You have a contract with 
the lady here. It's like a check. Hold on, hold on. Party, and the service, you're going to pay to another party for services provided under the contractual arrangement. I am just interested to know what are the services that you undertook to pay um, as per instruction from your contracted party that Ms. Doreen Miller had provided. That's all I'm asking. Chairman, 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 I, I'm going to ask my friend to be fair to the witness. The witness? As, yes. Or the Professor Pinnock. At no point did Professor Pinnock say that his entity had any relationship with it. He has said that there's no relationship. That's, from, that's what I heard. It had no relationship with, with, with um, Miller, who, whomever this person is. I never suggested He that. had instructions from a yes. party with whom he had a contract to endorse. That's what it amounts to. Okay. He's endorsed, she's endorsing her payment over to this third party. That is the context. Okay, okay. So, so I, I, d okay. don't let us be fair. I, I, no, no, as I, no, 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 as I said, Chairman, my, yeah. my, what I was curious about was the payment being made to a party. But he's saying that Ms. Dun, um, Campbell Dunswell instructed the CMU to pay that portion of payment that would be payable to her, uh, which amounts to to $3.8 million. Is it more than that? Is that. Okay. The, the amount is correct. Um, are there other parties that you pay similar amounts to on behalf of your contracted party, Ms. Ms. Campbell Dunswell? Is it only? No, sir. That's the, the only, that's the only that's, one. That's the only one, okay. yes, sir. Member Paul Ray. might have to get closer. Try All right. Chairman? Uh, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the issue of the payments to persons other than the um, contracting parties. I just want to make sure, Professor Pina, that in fact, the one payment to Ms. Miller was the sole payment um, to Ms. Miller. It's about um, five payments, sir. Five, five, five. She asked for five different part payments to be paid to. To be paid to Ms. Miller? Yes, sir. So Ms. Miller would have gotten five checks? Yes, sir. Um, totaling? That's five, five or six. This is nine checks, 3.853. Right, right. That, that yes. All right. And, and, and Piers, just to recall for us, because this consultant was also employed to the ministry, um, yes, being paid a, a set amount. Uh, yes, uh, would you have any experience of such similar requests being made for another person to be paid in, instead of the contracting party? Uh, well, it has not been our experience, sir. Mrs. Banton, I don't know if you want to comment. In terms of, uh, we would have ensured that if uh, the party who we have the contract with is the person that we are paying to directly. Your, your answer is no then. Which, which meant that we would not have gotten any instruction, in my experience, and Mrs. Banton's to, Banton's to pay to a third party. So perhaps if you could just remind us what was the total am amount that were paid to Ms. Campbell during this period of time? You are speaking from the ministry's perspective, sir? Yes. The ministry's contract was 
little different. Uh, the contract, well, we engaged her in 2017, and her contract was approximately $3.1 million per year. And the approach that was taken is that she submitted her inception report and her work plan, and she submit her, her updates on a monthly basis, and she is paid accordingly. I'm unable to speak right now to the amount that is paid monthly, but that can be provided. And so, just to be clear, um, Professor, you said that you have about 60 documents left to be turned over to the police. So, sorry, to, to the FI, to the Auditor General, yes, sir. Because we had supplied all that the FID had requested of us. But um, they choose to go to the court, you know, to request documents, most of which they were already have in their possessions. So, so you're, challenged, you're saying that there, there was no basis for them to go to the court to get the documents? So there was absolutely no basis to do that. That's a serious, serious claim, yeah. Professor. Yeah. We have been complying, sir. And as Pierre said, whatever documents they ask for is a matter of priority. We supply it and we have been, we have been working together with them. And if I might permit me, I just on that one point there. PM, this is alarming to me. Yes. Yeah. PS, um, alarming. For all the years on this committee, this and PAC, I've never heard of any government entity wanting to do an audit. That where an audit or an investigation is being done and that government entity seek legal advice to the handing over of the documents. I've never heard of it before and I say it never happened. Um, so what I'm hearing for the first time now you have FID, which is an arm of the Ministry of Finance. Or you have the law enforcement entity, whether it's MOCA or Integrity Commission, doing an investigation in a government entity. I hear you saying, Professor, that you have given all the documents requested. What is strange is why is it that a court order had to be sought, what is called a production um, order, had to be sought to get documents from a government entity. That is the first I'm hearing that. Well, sir, and you are correct, because the, as I said before, we have complied, and I said there must have been other motives. And it's not, it's not that we don't want to hand over the documents, but the process was irregular in which it was done. So we have seen a lot of times in this country where people's rights are abused, and I'm not saying this, I'm, ju I'm just saying something, because we need to follow the proper procedure. And all of, we're challenging the procedural aspect, you know, it's not about the documents, it's about the procedure, because I said it can be bought out no, personal. And that, what, is, what is the procedure that was breached? Because I would think, permit me, I'm not a legal scholar like my co colleague here, but the agency come and says, say, I need your computer, or I need this file. Ch Chairman, per and per it's handed over. Per perhaps what, what, what was given that this what matter is sub judice, may I just suggest that we um, not oh. pursue that particular No, this one is, this one, yeah, Professor, we can, is we can alarming. Be, yeah, we can say, uh, yes, but, we may, but we may feel, if there's nothing to hide, then there shouldn't be any reason not to give the documents. Uncomfortable, yes, but uh, given that there's a particular, it is a legal process there. which has to be pursued. All right, Chair, let, 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 me, let me, court. just on the, the, the CAPES programs, Chair, because I want to, be, before you, before yeah. you move on, just, just two questions. Yes. Last time you were here, I, you, you had indicated you had discontinued this arrangement, certainly from the side of the ministry. And, and I hope that this has been discontinued on the side of CMU. But Can I please, just clarify, sir? sir? I actually indicated that we had not started any work on the new contract since my last time here. We, I have consulted with my lawyer at the ministry and we have written to the Attorney General Chambers for them to, well, we have actually done our opinion on the matter through our lawyer and we are now waiting on a response from the Attorney General as to how we go forward in light of all the discussion as it relates to the investigation. So we await a response, sir, and based on the response, we will move accordingly. The, the reason I ask that is you, you had made that, but what we're seeing here is that this person from 
between the ministry and CMU was was earning in excess of 18 million Jamaican dollars a year. The, the contract for the ministry, sir, well, it's for the National Education Trust was 2017. Uh, she Sorry, she has not actually earned since the beginning of this year because a new contract was yeah, only signed. I, I, no, no, no. With due respect, I, you had said three million per year, and we had thir th um, fourteen point nine. So I was only doing one year. If you okay. add, if you okay. add the other year, you're up at twenty one. I was okay. being generous with my consideration, please. Okay, but only to say, though, Chairman, that uh, there is a little time lag in terms of when the contracts uh, were done and also when the CMU started to report to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, and the time to at least ensuring that the information is triangulated. Uh, uh, what would be unfortunate is that in the case of CMU, terminating the contract would actually be detrimental because it seems as if the total sum was paid out in the first year. You know, we would really have to see the benefits come at some point in time. So I think we're going to have to look and see how this is really going to be addressed. Member, Mr. Member Mr. Chair, he, asked, he yield to me. He does? Um, yes, no, he no, did. I have to hear it from him. Uh, he did, he did. Um, <laughs> Professor, you had indicated that you had gotten written approval for the payments to be made, and your chief accountant officer is here, and you brought the file with you, correct? So you, can you submit to us a copy of that authorization you got? It's actually on each on the invoice that are requested. It's stated in on the invoice. It's stated there. on the invoice. Yes, sir. The instructions so, was actually on each invoice. So you give us a copy of those invoices yes, where those instructions flow from. from. Member Phillips. And, and she would have signed those invoices. Yes, sir. Okay. If what I have here, Chairman, it, it, all it says is contract fees for CMU diaspora marketing and development. 70,000 U.S. Um, Caribbean Maritime University receiving good condition. This is February 20th, 2018, and it has a signature for something another Campbell. So there's what, an instruction what, what, what's on this. What is that part of that 70,000 U.S.? That's the 70,000 U.S. that yeah. was paid in multiple parts. Yes. So each of those is on the 20th it would have been part yeah, of but that. The, but the, but the, I think what is being asked, though, um, Prof, Where was is, the instruction is, given? Yes. Is, in other words, this is a total 70,000 invoice. Uh, no, Where no. is the document that is indicated that the... That's, he said it's the, on the invoice and it's the not percentage shown on the invoice. Was part, would, would be, it would not be on that invoice. It's other invoice that should have put the instructions on. That 70,000 US was actually... All of that was paid directly to Gail. No, oh, no, 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 no. A little slow for me, Prof. The, the payments to Miss Miller was part of the 70,000. It's not. So this is a separate payment. So those, one second. But these payments coincide at the same time. Yeah, that because the date, the date, the these date. These payments were made between February, February 13th to September 20th, 2018. That's a period Sorry. that these payments were made, and her invoice was from February 20th, which would be inclusive of period in here. So if she's making that instruction, it has to be on the invoice that she submitted. Not, it's a separate invoice, sir. It well, has been a separate so invoice. Well, so in addition, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to no. She Man. had an invoice dated what was circulated to us, copied to us. 20th of February for 70,000 US. From the 13th of February, you have a nine payments flowing from there to Miss Miller for $3.8 million. Are you saying that these payments to Miss Miller is in addition to this invoice of 70,000 US? That's that correct, and part of the overall 114,000. Yes, that can, I, can, can, can we ask then, Chairman? Can one we second, ask member, that, that member CMU? Jackson, one second. Hold on, Member Phillips, one second. 
Member Jackson, yes, yeah. please. He had yielded. Yeah. Let, let Member Phillips complete, yeah. and then yeah. anyone else that wants to. Can we then ask, then, the since, since there seems to be confusion on the payments and the payments to both Ms. Miller and, um, and, and Campbell Donwell, if all the invoices, if we can get copies of the invoices submitted to the committees so that we can, for, for, for my own sanity, huh, be satisfied that more payments have not gone out than what has been invoiced or what is being shown to us by the CMU. That, that will settle all, all speculations. Chairman, uh, to the PS, um, is it normal Madam Pierce, for the ministry to host surprise birthday parties for heads of agencies and departments within the ministry? I am not going to say that it is normal, sir, but from time to time there are celebrator activities. Uh, from my experience being at the ministry, we really have not had many celebration for birthday parties. So this surprise birthday party that was held on Thursday, August 16th, 2018 for Professor Pinnock is one such that the, the ministry hosted? Uh, I'm trying to remember specifically. Yes, we, I'm not going to say it was the ministry that hosted it, sir. We actually was asked a group of us at the ministry to organize a surprise party for Professor Pinnock. Says the email Pro says, on behalf of Dr. Grace McLean and the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, you are being invited to a surprise birthday party for Professor Fritz Pinnock. Uh, so it's a similar thing to the boat party where friends of the <laughs> minister no, it was actually persons internal, key persons within the ministry as well as the Caribbean Maritime Institute that were invited to that celebration, sir. And can you tell us what the cost of the, this party was? I would need to do some further research, sir. I am not armed with that information today, so I'll have to do some further research and provide you with that information, sir. Right. Um, Chairman, finally, on the CAPIES program, there's some some additional information that um, would need on which company had managed that program on behalf of the CMU, um, the procurement that would have, have um, contracted whichever companies have, and what are the deliverables that were expected for, for that program, and the, the start date of that program and how much has been spent and if we can get a payment schedule of those payments that have been made from that CAPS program. All right. Um, members, if there are no more, it, you know, I, I, I will say this, and in, in previous discussions, I got a lot of push back from some members of the committee when I made the point, Professor, that I'm a little concerned because the hiring of the former member of parliament at that particular point in time, the perception of it would have created some problems for CMU. It, it just generally speaking, and I just say to you, in paying out these invoices and paying out the invoice to somebody other than the consultant in this way. The perception of that, if it is indeed the connected party, the perception of it as a, some form of kickback or otherwise really puts these things in a bad light. And I think that it's incumbent on all our government agencies, departments, and ministries to, to ensure that things are not only done correctly, but are seen to be done correctly. And I think it's an important lesson to be learned out of all that has happened today. 
uh, members, if there's nothing left on CMU, I don't know if you had a yeah, further. Just, I just, just, just final, just wrapping up, Chair. Is you know, I, I heard Professor Pinnock say that there is a personal attack on, and and it would be unfortunate, or it's an unfortunate statement. I, I hope that he has. That is not so, eh? but. Prof, looking at all that has been presented in front of us, it is a messy affair at the CMU. And I, I for one, as a committee member, have no confidence in the information that has been provided to me that it is so. Eh? You know, it would have been it, it, probably useful. And, and it, it is disturbing also that it has to come to this point where court has to get involved in dealing That's with right. because because if there are no issue with the other 60 odd documents that are that, that that you said are left out of the hundreds that are requested then pass them on pass them on to the to, to the relevant authorities i think be quiet i no hold on hold on I think it would be useful for your own credibility and the credibility of the institution to I get to the bottom of all, to get to, to get to the bottom of this. And Chairman, seeing the, the party by the minister, the party by the ministry hosting party, for it is a messy affair. And it seems like it was a free for all for, for, for all that is involved. And that's my concern because the CMU has been a stellar institution. A stellar institution that, that all Jamaicans should be proud of. And I would, I would prefer to see the intervention, be that, be that there is a, a board that manages the CMU. But Madam Pierce, the, the minister, whoever the minister is, because you have three right now, needs to get involved in this. Because if I were the minister, Professor Pinnock and, 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 and the, the treasurer and the chairman seems to be complicit with all of this, should go and leave until chairman. this is dealt with. And I'm not taking back what I said. Because this, we need to preserve the credibility of CMU. And this is not personal against Professor Pinnock. But, but, Mr. Chairman, but a point the of ministry order, needs Mr. to Chairman, a point intervene of order. right now, Mr. Madam Chairman. Yes. And a point I am of not order, done. Sir. You must, you I am must, not done. I know you are not done, done, and I can done. understand the emotion yes. that you are having now. But, Mr. Chairman, earlier on, the, 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 the acting chairman referred to the, to the, the, the gentleman as a liar. Well, no, he's going. All that is showing in front No, you right. can't do. You you cannot do that, no, member. Members. And it is unfair to the technocrats that member, comes here member. each day. We cannot right. continue to sit here and abuse them in that fashion. Uh, not member, because uh, they are not serving. All right. That is not, that is not members, what, what we are here about, right. Mr. Chairman. Members. It is very sad. All right. It is very sad, Mr. Chairman. Member. Okay, member Clark. All right. I, I, are there any other interventions with regard to CMU? Because we still have another. Yes, member. Yeah, no, Chairman, member um, I, I'd like member to say, you know, being a part of this committee, the the purpose that we are here is to ensure that we we honour the truth in in any area that we have suspicion or or knowledge that it exists, and I believe that persons looking on will want us to conduct ourselves and the language that we use in a way that is, is consistent with not only standing order but the fact that we are in this house called the parliament mm -hmm. and therefore when we invite persons to attend our sole purpose must be to unearth the truth it, it, it cannot be it cannot be never it cannot it cannot be one where we sometimes give our personal opinion um, speculatively but must be based on facts that are presented and or facts to be presented or reasonable inferences 
that can be drawn from whatever is there. It has to be that. I mean, CMU, in the two years, 2017 to now, not me, <laughs> CMU has distinguished itself as an institution. Finish. And therefore, at no time should we try to impute motives, because that's not why we're, why, why we're here. The Jamaican people are looking on, and I guess we owe them, we owe them mm -hmm. the conduct that they expect of us, the ability to fit out any issues that might be real or otherwise, but at the end of the day, the institutions and the organizations that we invite to this house must be able to stand the test of time because we rely on them, the unattached programs, the, all these things. We rely on these institutions to carry on the work that we would like them to do. I, I think there's nothing you have said that any of us would disagree with. Uh, Member Jackson? One short closing comment. As, um, it, it bothers me terribly when I hear that a state entity has lawyered up in respect to investigation, not in respect of, I could see if it's an investigation of the, of the for emphasis. If it was a case that the individual was being investigated, it's a different matter. It is the institution. And so it more so it's a government institution. I am struggling in my mind about the retention of legal counsel. Institutional integrity. No, the state, this, this, minister, this agency falls under the prime minister's ministry. The prime minister is, no, the minister is the minister of education. Of education. Yeah. I think no other person than the prime minister have a right and a responsibility to protect the reputation for which my colleague made reference to a moment ago. And given that it's under the command of the Prime Minister, I believe the instruction should immediately, in fact, should wait on any instruction from the Prime Minister. Prime Minister don't have to come into this. So Pierce, as the CEO for the ministry, as I said, it's the first time I'm hearing something like this. Why is it that a government entity has to incur legal representation? What is the case? What I know is the case is that lawyers in your office would provide legal guidance to, or the attorney general's chamber would provide legal representation for all the government entities. Now, this is private counsel. Was a, was a fiat given by the attorney general's chamber? Oh, okay, you don't reach there. Was any instructions given by the Attorney General Chamber for, for um, engagement of private counsel where they would normally be the one providing that? Uh, so no, it is, it is it's worrying, Pierce. And I will ask um, Dr. Professor Pinnock, the law, legal representation... The cost of that is that being incurred by the institution, which is a government entity. It's very worrying, Chairman. All right. No, 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 no. There's just one. I, I move on. I'm, and, and quite frankly, I intend to, su to, to surprise the marshal and actually finish earlier than usual today. But quickly, and, and, and members, I, I think it's important for us to remember that, as I said, some things are under investigation. Let's be judicious. But P.S., the, the end of the school is here today. Who, who is representing? Oh, a principal, sir, Ms. Dr. Right. Mrs. Good, Nicoline good, Degras. Good Johnson. afternoon. Please. Now, I don't want us to get into details because those things are issues, but there have been some allegations of issues of um, inappropriate, them just go no further than that, um, behavior at the institution. Um, my question would be, P.S. and to the principal, 
do we have a clear procedure that when complaints of this nature are made that within the ministry and the institution is there a clear procedure as to how these are to be responded to the complaints and if so was that the case in this or was that what happened in this instant case I could just start before the principal comes in, sir. Uh, usually when we have situations of this nature, we expect there to be a complainant. So a complaint has to be submitted in writing. If that complaint is submitted to the ministry, the central ministry, then through the permanent secretary, a letter is sent to the chairman of the board, copied to the principal for an investigation to be done, and of course for the findings to be provided accordingly. Uh, the Edna Manley College is governed by a scheme of management, uh, and of course they use the code of regulation as well. So they would now have to follow the process in terms of having a board meeting, and from the board meeting then the complaint would be heard, and the chairman would at least get the personnel committee to have a formal hearing and to make a decision as to whether or not there needs to be someone who needs to go off on leave pending the investigation or whether they should now look at calling in persons for the formal hearing with the complainant and the person who is being complained, complained about to be held. So that's the, in essence, the process within the code of regulation. So basically, just trans that what you're saying is that the second part of your answer is that there is a, a procedure process, that's, yes, that's followed and I, I say because Ministry of Education with all the schools and the yes. teachers yes, sir. it's a, how many employees do you have in all uh, over 41,000 41,000 many of them paid. female yes, and, and male too yes. who could be subjected and, and so the, the, there must be a, procedure. a clear procedure yes, on, how, on how these things and are dealt with. Right. But the second part is that what you're saying is that you as a ministry were not informed. So we became formally hold, aware... Hold on one second, yes. Members. I know Mary just heard pass. Was it how many employees? How yes. many employees in the ministry? Oh, Okay, between okay. the schools. Oh, yeah. That's what I wanted to follow. <coughs> no, I said female. <laughs> well, well, let me tell let me tell you how that came about. Many of those were female. I intended that, but then I was making the point that you could have harassment of males too. So I was just being clear that I did not think that it could always be. Uh, you know, I, I and I know, remember Campbell that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, right. well, that, just for clarity, but um, you're saying that in this instant case? So in this, in this case, sir, the chairman and the principal actually brought the matter to my attention about two weeks or so before it was in, the, in the media, and they had actually started the process. The board so you would have gotten this about when? Uh, I don't have the exact date in no, my head, I'm saying but I about May. so by now it would almost be it was somewhere between the 25th on no it was perhaps somewhere between the 20th of May or thereabouts. So the end of May. In so the end of May, right, roughly, to, right, you got towards the end of you, May. It was brought to your it attention was brought to for my the first attention time by the chairman and the principal. All right, um, principal. Before you just um, they caught up on the number, the 41,000, and that includes teachers and Yes, so staff. approximately 25,000 teachers. Teachers, okay. And, and of course, the rest would 22. be the administrative staff okay. as well as the Auxiliary. central ministry okay. persons. Okay. How many of those 25,000 um, are males? Are what? Males. So they want to know the percentage <laughs> of employment in the Ministry of Education. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm just, just seeing what is happening to the teaching profession. Oh, absolutely. 
So, so the, rough, the rough data is that close to 90% of our teaching staff really represent females. So I, I, my, my statement was not far off the mark. But yes, Dr. So the, we, generally speaking, there is a procedure in place. Yes, sir. Was it followed, the procedure? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Chairman and afternoon. members. Uh, the ministry was contacted approximately May 10, somewhere around there. Uh, that's when we started the process. We got, we received two letters. Uh, it was, they were submitted to the board chairman and we started procedures at, the, at that point. So you're saying the first notification you got was we in May? We acted on it. That no, the there was, before that there were no complaints, you, have, you had no Bef notification of this? Before that, we, I received uh, two years ago a complaint. I spoke with the lecturer and with the vice principal, and at that point he was uh, asked if we heard anything else, we would have done the procedure according to what we have done. And when this came up in April, we immediately acted on it. Same case you're talking about two years prior? The same person. I didn't hear anything after after that. Chair, Chair, Chairman, uh, um, yes, Member. I, Chairman. I, <clears throat> once once you have a report of some wrongdoing, what is the mechanism that is triggered? Uh, because I, if if you had that report. Um, you, I, I take it that you would have had a written statement from the, the person who was complaining. No, I didn't, sir. Did this, so you had what? Just somebody just came in and willy-nilly or, or nobody uh, took a statement? I, I, I just want to, to find out exactly. The person just came from one of the faculties and, and came and said... Member of faculty from the School of uh, Arts Management and Humanities, yes. Right, and um, said, this has happened to me. Yes. And uh, what, to whom was the report made, or the, the, the statement? The member of faculty from the school came to see me to say that uh, students from the School of Visual Arts have said to her, and she stated... Students, one. not one. Yes. Yes. Students. Sorry, can I say it? Two years ago as well. When the complaint was made, was it made to you as well? It was made to me by the, the lecturer. All right. I just want to follow through. <clears throat> so the tr you did not insist on a written statement being taken from those students who complained? We always insist on written statements. I'm sorry? We always insist on written statements. All right. So why was not were not, were not statements taken at that particular time? I'm no, I'm not understanding. You said you got a written statement two years ago? No, I didn't say no. I got a written statement. It was a verbal. A verbal. A oh, lecturer came and, to me two and, years ago. Uh, right. So, right. so, so well, I'm the asking question is a valid question. The, 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 why was were it at least one statement? You had several students who came and complained. Or it went no, by. They, no, they didn't complain to me. No they student, didn't complain to you. No student complained to me. This one lecturer came to me. All right. Did you ask that particular yes, uh, I did. member of staff if he had the statements? Yes, I did. And what what was his report in in? Relation? At that point, she didn't have anything, and she would have gotten it. Did you insist on his going back and and, 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 and and taking the statements? I would have done that, sir. You would have done that. Yes, sir. And 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 so that person didn't come back to you with those statements. If you insisted on the statements being taken, yes. uh, did you follow through uh, and, and, and insisted that the statements be taken? If I followed through with her, I actually, I'm trying to remember two years ago, I, I would have asked her, yes, I would have asked uh, her. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly interested in what you would have done. What did you do? I would have asked her then to get the statements. No, I didn't. I, I just follow me. Okay. Your member faculty comes to you and says, two students, right. or three, or however many, they've reported this to me. 
what did you do? One, firstly, what did you do immediately? Uh, immediately, I asked her if the students had put it in writing. At that point, uh, she didn't have anything, and I told her that uh, for us to go anywhere with it, they would have to have put it in writing. All right. And what did you do after that? Because she, she, you, did you instruct her to go and get the statements? Yes, I did. Yes, and did she come back to you with those statements? She came back a few weeks after that. A few weeks? Well, I don't remember the time. Is that, is, is, is that, is, is that person still a member of your faculty? Yes, she is still a member. And, and did, you didn't see that that person who was in breach of, of, of their responsibility? Well, I would imagine that just like what we have right now, when the first person, this no, person... No, let, let, let us just follow through. Yeah, I'm following that. through, sir. No, I'm following no, through. Mama, Mama, but hello, I'm hello. following through. Just like when this, the case came up this year. It, I, no, I, no, I, but I'm, I, you I'm not particularly interested in what happened I know. this year. I'm, I'm, let us go back two years ago. That is the incident I am dealing with. So you have a member of faculty who had complaints, Right. who ought to have reduced them into writing, right. they weren't done. Am I correct up to this point? Up to that point, no. She brought back one. She brought back one. Yes. And what was done with that particular statement? I read it. Uh, we were to meet with the gentleman. He was off the island, and then we were... This happened in the summer months. The fact is you did not have the procedure instituted to bring to have him brought before the disciplinary panel true at that point yes and so in furtherance of that he was then empowered to go and to attack other students and so that and this is what has triggered the incident in 2019 or the reports we have in 2019 i may have to disagree i'm sorry i'm disagreeing with that you're disagreeing. But the fact is, 2017 or thereabouts when you received it, nothing was done in furtherance of your obligation under the code. Not true, sir. All right, Not well, true, tell sir. this committee what you did. I spoke with the vice principal of academic affairs at that point. Nothing came in before that. And so, because of the delicacy of the matter, when the, the lecturer returned to college, we had a conversation with him. At that point, I said to him, if it happened because I didn't have anything else to work with, and he denied it, if it happened again, we would move forward. And I didn't get anything else until this year, and we moved forward. Let's, so, so, so you had several complaints, right, in 2017 or thereabouts? No. So, but you I had only a statement from one, so you couldn't get the statement from the others to corroborate the one that Sorry. was taken? Because what you did was to assume that what the statement from the one was not true. Not true. Sorry. Thank you no. very much. You've been very helpful. No. Would, you, would you say, Madam Principal, that the fact that you did not follow through on the incident in 2017, would you say there was a gross dereliction of duty? No, I, I have. I, I think we have to come back because I have some other questions regarding procurement and so forth with 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 um, the yeah, um, institution. So it won't right. allow us with quarter yeah. pass. Exactly. So all right, members. All right, let me let me. We have had the Ministry of Education here. What I would ask members, please notify. Next meeting, Mr. Chairman. Pardon? At the next sitting of the PAAC. Yes, but what I would ask members is, please give us the the information that you would, you would require. Uh, we will ask the the secretary to the committee to move forward with that. What I would, um, because depending on the extent of it, because it was our intention to move on. One second. Remember, members, we are not meeting next week. Uh, next week is our is our gap week. All right. So at the next sitting, the, the question we'd have to ask is, 
whether or not we uh, are going to have Ministry of Education alone or are we bringing the Ministry of Local Government as was scheduled? Well, let, let, let me, that's why I say it. Submit the questions and if I may, I'll try and make some form of, um, of judgment on it. Were there any other questions, sir? Members? Chair, just... No, and, and I have, I, I I'm very concerned let, about... Let me just say this. I, I had initiated this line of questioning simply because I, I'm, I'm very clear in my own mind that we have to have very stringent sort of procedures and, and, and then what we can do is determine whether those procedures are, are followed as strictly as they could or should because out of everything we do, we must make, we must learn from, from our mistakes, as, as they may. All right, so, Member Stewart, yes. you have. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it would be remiss of me if I did not ask the PS, um, a burning issue here. Um, as it relates to the PEP, um, the paper this morning stated that the Ministry of Education is struggling to understand and explain the new um, how the results are to be explained to the parents, and there are a lot of concerns out there. P.S. Could you shed some light on it? First, I have to say, sir, that it is unfortunate that the matter was reported in that way. As the ministry held a press conference yesterday ahead of the release of the results to provide an update to the country as it relates to what the new reporting format will look like. Since that is out there, I'm happy for the opportunity to clarify that having almost completed the process, we decided that we needed to provide this information, which speaks to the fact that the ministry will no longer be reporting percentage scores, but rather will be reporting achievement levels on what is called in psychometric terms, scale scores. This means, sir, that we will be reporting in four categories, students who are beginning, which would mean that there is little or no evidence evidence of the required competence, students who are developing, which would be partial evidence of the required competence, those who are proficient, which means that they are adequate in terms of their performance, as well as those who are highly proficient who would be at the level of, of advanced competence. These four categories will have us place the scores for the subjects that the students would have done on a particular scale, and the band, as they use in the for international exams is usually between 100 and 600. So there's a particular band and the students will fall in different continuum. This will do to do two things, Member Stewart. It will remove the stigma of students who say who would have received 10%, 20% of being stigmatized as really failing students or students who are dunce. What it will show is that the elements that they are actually uh, advancing in and the areas for intervention. So it takes away that stigma. It also does something else. Previously in GSAT, we would be comparing apples with oranges from year to year. So so when we say that 60% for 2018 and 62% in 2019 with a two percentage points increase, it really does not allow for us to be comparing the elements within the curriculum with the student's general performance. So what these bands of scores that are placed on a scale will do will allow us to have accurate comparative data year after year. Just to advise you, sir, that we have a bulletin that will be going out today along with the comprehensive report that each parent will receive which will not only say that which will not say that you have gotten 70% and they do not know what 70% means it will show whether the child is developing beginning proficient or highly proficient and the band within which the students fall we also have designated persons our chief education officer and myself who will provide the information to the public and our eight quality assurance officers will be working directly with the principals and our schools to ensure that there is full understanding ahead of the release which will take place by the end of next week. All right, yes. 
all right. So we'll we'll get some questions for you, and and we can make a determination for the meeting week after next. I, there is a possibility. I think this issue of PEP. Yes, and I'm, I'm very happy for the clarification, but there are one or two questions that I think, you know, I, I, even in my own constituency, there are one or two things that I think maybe yes. we can explore this a little, a little further at the next meeting, because I really want to supply, I want to surprise the marshal. Yes, sir. If and just, just to say, by the way, that's him over there yes, with his sir. arms folded. Yes, sir. understand, sir. But you just notice, to say, I'm, I'm, I'm setting early today, relatively. Just to say, Chairman, <laughs> we, we, we understand the anxiety, sir, regarding PEP. It's a new assessment, and so it will take some time for the entire public to understand, but we are prepared to provide the clarification as necessary. Absolutely. Members, if that is it, um, we are, the meeting is now adjourned. environment where information is easily accessed 